Welcome back, guys! I'm here with another episode of Bible Q&A. Today we're discussing how do we lay up treasures in heaven? I'm pretty sure many of you guys are familiar with this verse. Matthew chapter 6, verse 20. That's where this whole concept was described. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. However, what does this exactly mean? How do we lay up treasures in heaven? First, let's define the term in question. Laying up treasures for ourselves in heaven is basically doing God's will. That's it. By doing this, we are actually saving up money in the bank. When we do the will of God, this helps us when we are in times of trouble. God will remember, oh, this guy was really righteous, and he will help us get out of our trouble. If we sin, then we have debt to the bank of God, and we can withdraw from our savings account of righteousness in order to pay that debt. Those treasures in heaven are very useful then. They help us in our race to life. Let's look at some examples. We have King Solomon in 2 Chronicles chapter 1, verse 6. He offered 1,000 burnt offerings in a single day. Most people just do one, two, but this guy did a thousand. God loved what he had done, and he was attracted by it. Not because of the smell of the aroma. No, it was because this guy actually found the time to do that. Obadiah did the same in 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 4, when he hid 100 prophets. Without his help, Jezebel would have gone and killed all the holy men of Israel. When you do these kinds of righteous things and you sin, like David did in 2 Samuel chapter 11 and 1 Chronicles chapter 21, it's fine. God will remember all those good things we did before we sinned, and he won't hold our sin against us. He's not going to say, Oh, you did this one thing, your entire life was righteous, and you made this one mistake, you're done. Get out of here. You're not going to get anything from the kingdom of God. No. What happens is, we sin, we feel remorse, and then God remembers that and says, I think I can forgive you. Look at how David felt here. I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and mine iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. Psalms chapter 32 verse 5. We can also look at 2 Samuel chapter 24 verse 10. Why would God not forgive someone who is willing to actually turn away from his sin? David was indebted to the bank of God because of his sin, but he informed the bank that he recognized his debt, and he was going to pay off that debt, and then the bank was able to use his righteousness to pay off that debt. The recognition is important. Will God forgive you if you don't repent first? In fact, we don't have to use all this righteousness just to pay off sin debt. We can use it to enjoy ourselves with the blessings of God that God has given us because we were willing to do all that stuff for him. When you're a rich person, there's so much stuff you can spend your money on, and it's the same thing with God. When you are rich in God's things, there are so many things you can do with your righteousness. My advice would be then, to do righteous deeds, do righteous things in your life. God can never ignore righteous deeds. He loves them. As it was said in Hebrews, For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which ye have showed toward his name, in that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 10. We can also look at this verse from Isaiah. Can a woman forget her sucking child, that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yea, they may forget, yet will I not forget thee. Isaiah chapter 49 verse 15. And that is where I'm going to stop with this Bible Q&A. How do we lay up treasures in heaven? We do this by doing righteous deeds. 
Thank you for listening. Don't forget to like and subscribe.